let's see the product in action. I'd like to welcome 16 year Oracle veteran Jacques Vijan to the stage. Don't you hate it when you're busy doing something really important and work just keeps getting in the way? Well, fortunately for us, Oracle, while we're busy catching up on the latest YouTube video, is keeping an eye on the business for us. And here we can see that one of our smart measures is reaching out to us through Slack and is telling us that maybe there's something going on with uh, revenue and it's predicting a decline. So let's go ahead and dig in here on Slack to take a look at what might be going on. So you can see that the Oracle Analytic chatbot here actually did a couple of things. Of course, it gave me a visualization showing a trend of what's going on. But more importantly, or what's more, more notable here, is that it's actually providing a natural language description along with the visual to help me synthesize what's going on. So here you can see that looking at sales, it detected that we have a steady increase, so we're good. Um, but if you look at the forecast, we're actually starting to see a decline or predicting a decline, which is key here. So as a curious person, I'm going to go ahead here, click on the alert, which hopefully will take me to the dashboard. Here we go. And you can see here the smart measure, which is, uh, which is giving me the information regarding the prediction and trend. But what's interesting here is you see that as I was surfing around on, on my dashboard, even though I've looked at this dashboard before, the smart data suggestion is telling me, hey, you should probably consider this data, this new data that I found that should be related or useful in this instance. How, how did that happen? How does the system know what data you might be interested in? Or even mm -hmm. what is the set of all data sets that are available uh, to you that you even have access to? Yeah, the, the smart data prep and smart data suggestion engine is always running behind the scenes and assessing what you're looking at. And here I was looking at revenue, I have products, product IDs, warehouses, warehouses ID, IDs, and it's detected, hey, we have inventory data here from, uh, from the ADW, mm -hmm. and product information maybe from the Fusion SaaS source, and order information as well, you might want to consider mashing that up with your dashboard um, cool. and really enrich your analysis. So for the sake of this demo, I'm going to go ahead and click on inventory data, product data, and just with a couple of clicks, you can see here on the measure pane here, uh, the list of analytics or measures are already available for me to sort of explore. But the real thing I want to explore right now is what's going on with my trend. Right? What can I do to sort of hopefully identify why it's predicting a decline in, uh, in sales? And that's when I'm going to turn to the augmented capability um, that we call explain. So rather than hunting and pecking ad nauseum through all the dimensions and measures and trying to figure out what's going on and hopefully coming across accidentally maybe something meaningful, mm -hmm. um, we have this explain feature that lets you just click on what you're interested in, forecast in this instance, and then invoke and explain, which does a couple of things. Here it's showing us basic facts about uh, the forecast, which is interesting, gives you high level information uh, regarding data distribution. But what's more interesting to me is trying to, is the fact that the system is also identifying key drivers for me. So it's looked at all the dimensionality behind the scenes and, and told me that really, you know, channel, country, and product line are what, what I should start with. Now, how does that work? I imagine there's some sort of algorithm that runs behind the scenes. Yeah, there's, um, there's a few things that we actually do behind the scenes to, uh, to prepare this. The first, as we saw in the basic facts, we do some clustering and some data distribution algorithms to help mm -hmm. you get a high level sense of how your data is spread across the different dimensionality. Um, we also do some classifications to help mm -hmm. you find hidden groups of data within, uh, within the measures and the dimensions. Mm -hmm. Also find correlations between the dimensionality. And in some instances, depending on what you're clicking on, we'll also do some decision trees to help you spot anomalies in the data. But for the sake of this analysis, I'm just gonna go ahead and start an exploration on these three specific um, dimensions that it identified as key. So I'm gonna go ahead here and add that to my dashboard. 
And just like that, now we can see that I've got, you know, a canvas ready for, for deep exploration. Now, a few minutes ago, we added inventory to this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and drag inventory onto my map to see how inventory compares in terms of uh, in related to sales, if you will. So just with a couple of clicks, I can now see how I'm performing, where there's availability of, of inventory. Mm -hmm. Overall, we see everything's pretty green, a couple of yellow things, and then one sort of freaky red thing in Germany. <laughs> um, but let's take a look here specifically at the product level. And lasers are looking good too. But maybe uh, something's going on with action figures. And sure enough, when you click on action figures, we can see that something over here in France, mm -hmm. there's clearly some sort of inventory shortfall in France. Mm -hmm. um, but the good news is that there's plenty of green around France. You look in Spain, Italy, and in, in the UK, there seems to be plenty of inventory available. So in order to solve this problem, at least in the short term, why don't I just contact somebody in, in the London office or in the, in the UK who can maybe reallocate some, some stock for me? So the way I'm going to do that, pretty straightforward. I'm just going to go ahead and click on my visualization and then initiate a Slack message with this person. And so I'm going to reach out to Sarah Bennett in this instance and ask her if I can reallocate some of her inventory to the France, French region. So I'm going to go ahead and hit post here. And just like that, I'm back in Slack here and Sarah got notified that I needed approval. Attached with the notification um, was the analytic so that mm -hmm. she could click on it and maybe go look at the problem uh, herself. Um, and it looks like she's replying right now. And generally she thinks it's pretty, it's gonna be okay. But just before you know, she pulls the trigger on this thing, uh, she'd she has a follow-up question, right? And she'd like to know what's my sort of demand going to be over in the next, or going to be like in the next three months. And so without ever leaving Slack here, I can actually invoke the Oracle Analytics chatbot and more or less invite it to the conversation here and ask OAC to show us the sales and inventory forecast for London in the next three months. So that's not just static content from OAC that's showing up in Slack. You're actually connected live to the OAC. Instance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when you think about the, the holy grail of analytics is to ultimately not do charts and graphs, but to help people make better decisions, right? Mm -hmm. And if they happen to be in Slack when they're making decisions, why not push the information out to the user and not force the user to go back? And Right here, we're seeing how our natural language processing capabilities can sort of look through the Slack channel, but we also support a multitude of other channels like SMS, uh, Microsoft Teams, WhatsApp, Skype for Business, and on and on and on. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and let the chatbot do its work here. And just like that, it's produced an analytic that's uh, letting Sarah know that uh, generally the demand looks fine for London. So she hopefully will approve this. And there we go. So now I'm good to go. All I need to do now is maybe invoke or definitely invoke the inventory transfer. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to the home page. That looks like a new user experience. I haven't seen that before. Yeah, yeah, we've heard from our customers. Simplify, simplify, simplify. And um, in this upcoming release, we're releasing a new unified home page that consolidates all the different types of analytics, whether it's pixel perfect reporting, data flows, data visualization, or reports and at dashboards that are created for you by, uh, by IT. It's all in one sort of unified home page. You can search, you can organize, add to favorites, do all of it in just this one place, this one stop shop, if you will. That's great. Um, but we went beyond that. It's not just the home page. We've also worked at uh, unifying how the products look across the board. So you can see here that I'm in one of our traditional dashboards um, that was prepared for us by IT. And it has a unified look with the rest of Oracle Analytic Cloud and Oracle Analytic Server, if you will. Um, now, if we go back to my story, what I wanted to do is reallocate some stock from London to um, Paris, hopefully. 
And so all I need to do is come to this dashboard and I can right click on any of these meaningful um, elements. And in this instance, I want to transfer some inventory. So I want to transfer from the London warehouse 15,000 units and I'm going to go ahead and hit execute here. And that takes me to the supply chain inventory transfer page. And it's taken my context from OAC, including um, action figures, which was the products, the quantity. It's logged me in, by the way, and made sure it's provided all the security information that the app requires. And now all I need to do is give it a destination warehouse. I'm going to go ahead and hit Paris here and then hit submit. And then just like that now, the inventory transfer has been invoked, if you will. Mm -hmm. But the problem isn't really solved until it reaches Paris. And if you're like me, you're moving from city to city or from, uh, from office to office or even just meeting to meeting and you're not tethered to your desk all the time. And so one of the things we try to do is provide some continuity between uh, the desktop, hopefully this will connect, between the desktop and the mobile device, whether it's a tablet or a phone, it doesn't matter. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the Oracle Analytic app and show you how somebody like me might uh, wanna sort of keep track of this from day to day. And so the first thing you see when you fire up the app is what we call the recommended smart feed, which is a list of analytics that the system has determined might be meaningful to me based on what's going on in my day, but also what's going on in the community, my peers at work. Maybe it's something my boss wants me to see, or maybe it's a message I got like this one from a coworker about you know, profit, profitability over time. Um, so that's great. And also you can see that it's aware of all the searches I've been doing um, on the desktop. But we also have a feed that's really targeted at me specifically. You know, what am I keep, keeping track of? What's important to me right now? And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to keep track of this inventory in France right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add to this feed simply by asking a question. Quel est le niveau de stock par produit et ville en France? So just like that, using my voice, I can ask a question and then the system brought back a couple of visualizations to help me keep track of that. I can click on it, add it to my favorites or my feed, if you will, and now every day until I get the notification that we received the 15,000, I can keep an eye on what's going on. So how does that work? So you expressed your question in French, but I noticed from the earlier part of the demo, the data, the metadata and the semantic model, all of that stuff was in English. So uh, how does it translate back and forth between these language boundaries? Yeah, there's, there's several things at play that the natural language processing engine does. The first thing is it looks at your question mm -hmm. and then scours throughout all the data sets that we have to try to identify which one of these dozens or hundreds of data sets is most likely to have the answer to your question. And then once we identify that, we compare it to the terms that you, you have and then produce a query. Now, in this instance, I asked a question in French. Mm -hmm. My data was in English, my semantic layer was in English. So it had to turn to what we call synonyms. So we use synonyms for not only just different languages, but for example, some people called revenue is income, is sales, you know, different people yeah. call things differently, but at the end of the day, it's pointing at the same data. So fortunately, our synonyms infrastructure supports multiple languages, 28 to be precise. And so that's how we can relate a French question to an English data set and get you going. Well, that's awesome. Well, merci beaucoup. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacques Vigeant.